Socialist Workers Group calls for mass action against Tinubu over 430% fuel price hike in barely 17 months. Now to the news in full. The Socialist Workers League, SWL, has pledged to resist the Nigerian government's neoliberal policies while condemning the planned increase in fuel pump prices to over 1,300 naira under the President Bola Tinubu led administration. The price of premium motor spirit has soared to over 1,300 naira, reflecting a staggering 430% increase in just 17 months. The escalation in, in fuel cost, the SW argued, is not just a financial burden, but a direct assault on the already struggling populace, with over 130 million Nigerians living below the poverty line. In a statement released on Friday by Conley Wiseman Ajayi, through the national chairperson Amaran Wosu, the League criticized the ongoing fuel price hikes and the removal of fuel subsidies as integral components of a new liberal agenda that primarily benefits a select few. The persistent increases in fuel price are not merely economic adjustments. They are deliberate attacks on the well-being and livelihood of working people, Ajayi asserted. Well, I'm to believe so because people are, are really going through a lot. Today, there was no traffic on the road because everybody has parked their car at home. They can't go out. They would rather park their car and go and enter public transportation to work. The road was absolutely free today. Today, I know that it's always hustling and bustling, especially on Friday when you're coming back from work. The traffic is always on the high side, but today, everywhere was free. Free. Because people have parked their cars at home, they cannot afford the price of the new fuel price. It is really, it is really getting out of hand. The neoliberal agenda driven by international financial institutions like the World Bank and IMF alongside local capitalists such as Dangote serves to entrench capitalist interests while undermining the majority. Ajayi also accused the government of misleading the public by claiming that savings from subsidy removals would be reinvested in social services. We have been hearing these empty promises for decades dating back to the structural adjustment programs of the mid-1980s. Instead of relief, we have only seen continuous price hikes and worsening living conditions, he said. The statement reads, it is thus not surprising that over the same 17 months, the cost of living crisis in the country has worsened with geometric, pro geometric pro progression. Cost of living inflation is already over 40%. The poor masses can hardly breathe. Oh, we are suffocating now. They want to suffocate us. They want to kill us. Please, we are, we are not breathing well. Though. Hunger has become our daily companion. This is unacceptable. Please, it is. People can talk and, and protest and say, no, we don't want this, this particular fuel price increase. Though. And that they should return subsidy. Please, they should do something about it. People can no longer afford to eat. You cannot even eat what you want. You just eat anything that you see. You eat what you see. You can't say, oh, oh, I'm craving this, let me go and buy it. You can't. In this economic situation where there is no luxury of doing that, you can't do that. People cannot breathe. People cannot survive. Please, they should do something about it, I beg. The rich keeps getting richer and the poor people remain perennially poor. Government officials receive huge amounts of money as allowances, buy yacht and aeroplane with billions of naira. Meanwhile, poverty rates are increasing. Unemployment is soaring and the hardship facing us has become unbearable. It said this fast rate hardship led to a wave of spontaneous protests in February and March. It also inspired the recent end bad governance wave of protests between August and the beginning of October. We cannot overemphasize the need to deepen resistance to the neoliberal policies and capitalist forces that have put us in the state of anguish. Ajayi noted that the social force with the greatest structural power to challenge the government and force it to back down from the fuel pump rise, increase and anti-people's policies in general was the working class. He said, we all saw how in 2012 the entry of the trade union movement into the fight back against the sharp increase of fuel price by Goodlord Jonathan raised mass protests that had started spontaneously to the level of uprising, forcing the government to make some partial price reversal. But that is because Jonathan has conscience. 
that man, he has conscience, he's a good person. This person that is there now, he doesn't really care. He does not care. Jonathan has empathy. He's, he's a good person. That is why he, 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 he reversed the price. But this person there, ah, I don't know. And this explains why there have been calls on the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress, TUC, to lead a fight back to reject the recent increase in fuel pump price. But we must go beyond this. Without pressures of workers, power from below, it is unlikely that the NLC and TUC will do anything significantly different from what they have done since the 29th of May 2023. Subsidy is gone, declaration which is essentially nothing. An important lesson from the 2012 January uprising is that the trade unions were forced to take the action they took precisely because of such pressures from below. We urge rank and fire workers and the mass of working people to rise and fight and to put pressure on their trade unions and organization. Leadership to stand firm and resist the neoliberal policies that have made our lives an unending ill. We are hungry, we are angry, and we must fight to overthrow the system that is the root cause of fuel pump price hikes and the generally pitiable state of our existence, dare to struggle, dare to win. He had it. Yeah? It is well. I hope they listen. Ambrose Wanga said, In his manhood, we shall stand for eight years. No going back. Because <laughs> everybody that says we shall stand on his mandate, all of them, they've gone into their hiding. All of them. They can't post again. The way they were posting back to back. Ah, on Tinubu's mandate, we shall stand. Emilio Khan, this and that. Now, they are suffering. They cannot even afford to buy data to come and post anything again. Eh? Standing on the mandate of somebody that does not have the good will of the people at heart. Somebody that could not come to say what he wants to do for the citizen. He was just saying, Emiloko, Emiloko, Emiloko. Debate, it, it did not go. This one, it did not do. And you believe that you, you should vote for this person. Though our votes did not count, but still, some people actually voted for him. Ah! Now, wow! Sile Musa said the so-called opposition party leaders like Atiku and Peter Obi should be out leading protests instead of murmuring on social media. I wonder why they shy away from challenging Buhari and Tinobu as both men confronted Jonathan. As in the way they confronted Jonathan that time. Ah, the way they told him to step down and all of that. They can't do the same thing now. Why? Once they see that you are gentle, you don't talk too much, they try to... To, to just push you around anyhow because they know that you don't like trouble and then you will leave. But this person, they know that he's a no-nonsense person, so they can't even talk. They dare not talk. Why are they so afraid of him? Why? Adjuka says, Emilio Kong, without any idea towards Nigerians' problem. He, he has, they have not, in fact, they don't know what they are doing as far as I'm concerned. They are just doing whatever. They don't know what exactly they should do to try to make the country better. They don't know. That is just my take. My listeners, over to you. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. Do not forget to like, to share, and to subscribe. Thank you for listening to you some other time. Bye.